Good afternoon, my name is Brandon and welcome to episode 3 of the Beginner Welding Series. If you haven't seen episode 1 or episode 2, I'll put a link up above for you to check out. In this episode, we're going to be talking about cutting tools and the various types of cutting tools that you may want to purchase. Towards the end of the video, we'll talk about some welders. This week's topic is going to be MIG welders. The hand hacksaw. And I do not pick this as one of the tools as a must have or a necessity if you want to cut metal. Just too time consuming, too labor intensive. There are better options out there. A reciprocating saw. It only cuts on the back stroke. It's a little bit quicker than a hacksaw, but it's still not the most ideal tool. The grinder cutoff tool. I've given this a green check mark and I consider this a must have for any metal worker. If you're looking to get into metalworking, you're going to need to have a tool that can grind and cut. This is a multiple tool. If you want to know any of the specifics of the tools that I'm using, I will leave a link down in the description below. The fourth tool, and I considered it a must-have, portable bandsaw, and I'll explain why. So the portable bandsaw is extremely fast cutting tool because although it does cut in one direction, it's constantly rotating. So it's constantly cutting. It does take a little bit of practice to get nice good straight cuts with it. I prefer to take the saw to the work than bring the work to the saw. So for that reason I'm considering this one of the must-have tools. Bandsaw, they're a little pricey and I just feel that this isn't the best option. Vertical bandsaw, same thing as a portable bandsaw but it's stationary. I don't consider this one of the must-have tools simply due to cost and I prefer to bring the saw to the work rather than the work to the saw. Chop saw or a dry cut saw versus a portable bandsaw. I would say Again, I'm still going to pick the portable bandsaw over the chop saw simply for the reason that uh, the chop saw dry saw is a little bit more than the portable uh, bandsaw. Not a lot, but a little bit. Plasma cutter. I have one. I thought it was going to be the be all do all for the workshop and I was disappointed that it's not. It just requires much more than me just grabbing the portable bandsaw and making a cut. I kind of need the plasma cutter close to where the work is that I'm trying to cut and then once I get it within that range then I gotta hook up an airline, hook up a power cord and then I gotta, you know, it's just too much fiddling around. Because I don't use it a lot, I don't really consider it one of the must-have tools. So. so to recap, if you could pick one tool and one tool only to cut metal I'm going to say pick up yourself a grinder, that would be my number one pick. If you wanted to pick up two tools uh, to have a nice rounded package to be able to cut metal, pick up yourself a portable bandsaw. But I think that could wait. Uh, if finances were tight, just pick up yourself a grinder. You'd be able to do a lot with it. You'd be able to do 90% of everything you need to do in your workshop. If you're thinking that MIG welding is the process that you want to go with, if you can, and finances allow it, get the welder that can have the gas hooked up to it. Now if you want to weld outside, that's where your flux core is going to come in handy. If you have a garage or an enclosed workshop, you're going to get really good results with having uh, argon gas. You know, you're going to want to shop around where you get your gas. Some places you have to enter into a contract. Some places they don't allow you to have your own tank. So you're going to want to check around. Personally, for me, I'll just tell you what I do. I have a contract through a uh, national gas supplier. Super reasonable. It's like a five-year contract. I just bring a bottle to them. It's their bottle and they fill it and then I just take it back. When it comes to bottle selection, I think anyone will tell you get the biggest bottle you can afford. I don't own my own bottles and I don't advocate getting your own bottles. I've had some bad experiences with owning my own bottles. Let them have all the headaches of certifications and all that other nonsense. When I need a bottle, I just bring back my old bottle, they give me a new one and out the door I'm, I'm at in 10 minutes. Just to clarify, so when I say get the biggest uh, tank you can afford, what I mean by that is, let's say, I got a bottle half of this height or half of this capacity and let's say it cost $50 to fill it. 
Well, if I wanted a bottle twice the size of that, it's not going to be twice the cost. So it's not going to be $100. It's going to be less. So the bigger the bottle you get per volume, the cheaper it becomes per cubic foot or however they calculate it. So, and it's considerably less. So you're going to want to talk to your gas supplier and these are all things you're going to want to take into consideration when you go from uh, a flux core to a gas setup. And this gas is also referred to as C25. One of the things that was important to me when selecting a welder, first of all, is that if something goes wrong, am I going to be able to get parts? Uh, you're going to be able to get all the consumables, the nozzles, the tips, and it's got a nice chart on the door. Steel that you're working on, and you're using a C25 gas. We're using 30 thousandths inch wire, and let's say you wanted to weld quarter inch. That tells us that we need to select 5 and 50 on the front. So you'd go here, go 5, put up to 50, and that's going to be a good starting point for you. The next important feature, as far as I'm concerned, if you notice, the all of this is all metal. Some of the more inferior ones, uh, all this stuff in here was all plastic. These are all metal uh, rollers and drive gears, so uh, high quality construction. So those are just some of the considerations to take into account when you consider purchasing a welder. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your time. Stay tuned for next week. It's going to be episode four where we're going to build a project and we're going to start laying down some beads with a MIG welder. If you have any questions about the gear that I'm using, you can check that out down in the description below. I want to thank you guys. Have a good day. See ya. Come, come.